On uh, I-18, that takes us to uh, anterior extensor muscles, the quadriceps. Uh, we have a picture uh, of the quadriceps. On I-19, on I-19, there is this huge muscle on the front of the thigh, huge. It is called the quadriceps femoris. And it's called quadriceps because there are four tendons of origin. It inserts on the tibial tuberosity. Do, do, we, do we ever no. learn tibial tuberosity? No. Right? Remember, that's the bump. That's the bump below, about an inch below the kneecap or patella. So if you feel the tibial tuberosity, that bump below your, about an inch below your kneecap, that's where this muscle attaches. And you might remember when you tap somebody's knee to trigger or elicit the knee jerk, the patellar reflex, the knee reflex, you actually tap right between the kneecap and the tibial tuberosity in that very sensitive space. Because the four parts of the quadriceps are each so large, they're each given their own name, and you have to know them. But there's the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius. Now again, this is much simpler than it sounds. The rectus femoris. Did we ever learn what rectus means? It means straight. You'd say, when did you tell us that? Rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis is the straight muscle on both sides of the linea alba. So this is the rectus femoris. It's this one right here. R running straight right here. Uh, on the front, rectus femoris. What does that literally mean? Straight along the femur, rectus femoris. Now, there is another branch, another part of this muscle that's on the lateral side, and in a lot of swimmers, in bodybuilders, or weightlifters, it's just bulging on the lateral side of their thigh, where you see that big bulge on the lateral side. That's the vastus lateralis. And again, a common site for intramuscular injections. Then there's a muscle on the medial side. Well, if the one on the lateral side was called the vastus lateralis, what should we call the one on the medial side? The vastus medialis. medialis. <coughs> and the fourth part is actually right underneath. It's right below or underneath the rectus femoris. It's called the vastus intermedius, and I won't ask you it. What's the importance of the quadriceps group, that quadriceps muscle? That extends your lower leg. So, in fact, when you tap the knee, you're testing that muscle, because what does it do? It makes your leg extend. The technical name for what we commonly call the knee jerk, or patellar reflex, is the anti-gravity stretch reflex of the quadriceps femoris muscle. The quadriceps femoris extends your lower leg, you say, well, yeah, but when do I do that? In order to walk. Every time we walk, we're extending our, for, uh, our lower leg. In our, in our handout here, uh, the quadriceps, the three parts that we want you to know are in bold print. That fourth one is not in bold print. Uh, the three parts originate on the femur. The rectus femoris actually originates on the ilium. It inserts on the tibia. It extends the lower leg. And uh, the antagonist of the quadriceps are the hamstring muscles. Now the quadriceps is on the front of your thigh. It extends your lower leg. The muscles that are on the back of your thigh, commonly called the hamstrings, flex your lower leg. They are the antagonists. They're all equally important because the way we walk is we alternately extend our lower leg and flex our lower leg. Extend our lower leg and flex our lower leg. We have to be able to extend it with our quadriceps and flex it with those hamstrings. Now, the word hamstring is not a scientific term. That's just the common English expression. They are properly called the biceps femoris, and the other two both start with the word semi. I don't know why, but they are the semi-tendinosus and semi-membranosus. On I-23, the very last page of the I section, here we can see the uh, biceps femoris, The biceps uh, femoris, again, I will look at the lab manual, it's really better. And then there's the two semis, the semi-membranosus and semi-tendinosus. 
The biceps femoris is on the lateral side of the, on the back, lateral side, postural lateral. Right next to it is a narrow semitendinosus, and most meaty was the semimembranosus. So here's an, some mnemonics that uh, I commonly suggest. The biceps brachii is the important muscle that flexes our arm, right? Biceps brachii, flexes our forearm. The important muscle that flexes your lower leg, the biceps femoris. So the biceps brachii flexes at the, at the elbow, the biceps femoris flexes at the knee. They both start with biceps, they're both important flexors. The uh, biceps femoris is lateral, right next to it is this narrow semitendinosus. It's running along the middle of uh, the back side of your thigh. It's narrow like a tendon. And then most medial, most medial is this semi membranosus with the letter M. It's the medial. It's a muscle like a broad membrane, and it's medial, semi membranosus. Now, when I make up these little memory aids, you can make up whatever memory aids you want. The whole idea is be creative to help you remember these things. Uh, all right, the, uh, we've mentioned the quadriceps. And uh, then there were three so-called hamstring muscles. But the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. All three originate on the ischial tuberosity. That's the bottom of your pelvis. And they insert on the back side of the tibia. They pull the tibia closer to your ischial tuberosities. Basically, so causing flexion at, uh, of your lower leg, flexion at the knee. Uh, and they are the antagonists of the quadriceps. So again, when to practice, just simply say quadriceps as you extend your lower leg, and uh, say biceps femoris, which is the biggest of the three hamstring muscles to flex your lower leg. So uh, quadriceps femoris, uh, biceps femoris. All right, we had mentioned uh, the, the hamstrings uh, on the bottom of I-20. Even though we, uh, I'm using that word hamstring, even though it's very common on a test, don't tell me hamstring. Uh, write down biceps femoris, semimembranosus, semitendinosus. All right, so those are the hamstring flexors. And that takes us to I-21. At the bottom of uh, I-21, the tibialis anterior. Tibialis anterior is right on the front of the tibia. If you feel your own <coughs> lower leg, now you can all feel the anterior crest, that sharp edge, just lateral to it. Just lateral to that sharp edge, big chunk of muscle, tibialis anterior. What does it do? It dorsiflexes. It points your foot up towards the sky. Now it actually does one more thing besides dorsiflex. It also inverts the foot. And I do want you to know both. I wrote both of them on this uh, handout here. It dorsiflexes the foot and inverts the foot. Your first thought might be, well, like, when the heck do I ever dorsiflex? I don't go around, you know, pointing my foot up towards the sky. Actually, every time you walk, when you swing one leg forward, as you're swinging one leg forward to walk forward, you point your toes up. Because if your toes are pointing down, you're going to stub your toe, which we've all done on occasion. But that normally, as you're swinging your foot forward, that tibialis anterior points your toes upward. The antagonists of the tibialis anterior are those two calf muscles. The big one, the, on the back of your calf, the gastrocnemius. And uh, right underneath it, the soleus, they both insert on the calcaneus bone, the heel bone via the Achilles tendon, both of them and they plantar flex the foot. So plantar flex is pointing your toes down. Obviously, if you're a ballet dancer, you dance on your toes, but also this is the way we jump. When you jump, and you're welcome to demonstrate this right now with me, the way you jump, it, you actually bounce right off uh, your, your toes. These muscles are uh, attached by the uh, Achilles tendon to the calcaneus, so if somebody suffers an injury to their Achilles tendon, they can't jump. Uh, so you can't be a ballet dancer, and you also can't be a basketball player, because you've got to be able to jump. Oh, okay, we're down to, I think, the last uh, three. Let's start with the flexor digitorum longus. 
The flexor digitorum longus obviously sound from its name, it flexes the toes, the digits. And it, I call it the FM muscle. It's easy to remember, everybody's heard the term FM radio. So FM, the flexor is on the medial side of the lower leg. Just look on the medial side, you know what the tibialis anterior is, you know what the gastrocnemius is, it's running on the medial side. That's the flexor digitorum longus, the FDL. Uh, if the flexor is on the medial side, FM, then the extensor must be on the lateral side, just the opposite side, the lateral side. So I just remember FM, and then I know that the other one must be uh, lateral. So that extends uh, the toes. And the very last muscle, the uh, fibularis or peroneus, you can use either term. The newer term is fibularis. That's actually kind of on the back side of the lower leg. It's on the back side. Uh, it's right between. It's right between the flexor digitorum longus and the extensor digitorum longus on the back side. The flexor is medial, the extensor is uh, lateral, and on the back side between the two is the uh, fibularis. It everts the foot. And I did make that in bold print, and we're all kind of thinking, why? I mean, it's like I can barely evert or turn my foot outwards at all, and it's not a big muscle, so why make it bold print? because it's the antagonist of the tibialis anterior. You'd say, well, that's nice, who cares? Uh, the, it, the tibialis anterior, we said, not only dorsiflexes, but inverts the foot. I'm gonna explain what happens if this uh, fibularis isn't as strong, as strong as it should be. The tibialis anterior, we said, points your toes up when you walk but at the same time it tends to invert your foot so that the sole is turned medially. You'd say, okay, so what? All of us at one time or another have turned our foot medially, the sole medially, and put the weight on the side of our foot. That's called, a, you've sprained your ankle. You, you put the weight of your foot on its side rather than on the sole. You are inverting your foot and therefore your soul was turned too much inward. That's because the fibularis wasn't strong enough. It counteracts the tibialis in everting the foot, and if it's, they're in the right balance, your foot goes right on the sole. But if, it, if the uh, tibialis is too strong, it inverts it as we take our step. So that's why it's more important than you might have thought. So you have a, a picture of some of these on I-23, this is a nice view of the gastrocnemius inserting by the Achilles tendon onto the calcaneus bone. Uh, right underneath it is the soleus. Uh, tibialis anterior is on the front. This is the uh, peroneus or fibularis muscle here kind of on the back. And right here on the lateral side, it's not labeled, but that would be the extensor digitorum longus. On the day of our test, uh, we will have the cats, all these cats set up, there'll be numbered pins in the muscles asking you the name of the muscle, maybe uh, its uh, origin or insertion, actions, uh, possibly the antagonist. The emphasis will be on those in bold print. So those are the ones I'm most going to emphasize. So put your emphasis first on those, make sure you know the ones in bold print, then try to learn those that aren't. Now, uh, there will be one more part to the lab exam. Now I'll just tell you about it right now. Uh, there will be a completion chart. I can give you, uh, for example, let's say I wrote uh, pectoralis. All right, so could you write for the pectoralis, the major muscle right here in the chest, its origin, insertion, and action. It originates on the clavicle and sternum. It inserts on the humerus, and one of its major actions, not the only, is it adducts the arms. Now, we could also do this. What if I told you uh, the origin of the muscle is, uh, is the thoracic vertebrae? So you're thinking thoracic vertebrae, and uh, it inserts on the occipital bone. That's the splenius. That's the muscle that extends and hyperextends your neck. That's in bold print. That's a major muscle. Uh, it's the antagonist to the sternocleidomastoid. In other words, I don't have to go, you know, a lot of students will say, but I only know it if you just tell me the muscle and then I 
No, if you really know at least those in bold print, I can give you anyway. You know, it's like when you're learning a foreign language, you have to be able to translate not only from, say, Spanish to English, but English to Spanish. They ask you to go both directions, not just one direction. Uh, or I might just, uh, what if I just said this? Uh, what if I just said, uh, extends the forearm? That's the triceps brachii. There's only one muscle that extends the forearm. The biceps brachii is the major muscle that flexes the forearm. The major muscle that extends the forearm is the triceps brachii. So again, I might tell you the name of the muscle. I might tell you origin insertion. I might give you the action. Uh, the emphasis, again, will be on those on bold print.